Welcome to the first annual UCSF Global Health Economics Colloquium. We've instituted an effort as part of the Global Health Economics Consortium, which I prefer to pronounce geek on as in get your geek on. Your <laughs> economists will understand that joke. Our mission in GeekCon is to promote the use of state-of-the-art economic analyses to increase the impact of public health and clinical science to advance the health of people worldwide. Through fostering global access to information and tools, we promote precision health policy, as Claire described, the use of evidence to inform locally adapted health strategies and interventions. Uh, this is something we pursue through technical research, broad collaborations, and innovative teaching and training programs. Precision medicine, in my view, should aim to achieve better quality of care at a lower cost. And it ought to incorporate the social and economic determinants in its definition and scope. My mantra in global health sciences is to develop affordable health solutions delivered for measurable impact. Precision health policy, as we are beginning to define it, is the use of evidence to inform locally adapted health strategies and interventions with the goal of achieving large and lasting health gains. The concept entails the integrated consideration of evidence on disease epidemiology, intervention costs and effectiveness, delivery systems capacity, and financing. The reason we do health economics is because we're interested in getting better value out of the money that we spend on health, right? It's pretty much that simple. We want value for the money that we spend on health. And even though Jim put global into the topic of my talk, now that I'm back in the US, this is like nirvana for a health economist because there's no place in the world that comes even close to the inefficiency we have in this country. We spend more money to get less than anywhere in the world by far. I mean, we just waste enormous amounts of money in our healthcare system here. We all want the best healthcare that money can buy. Now, I want a float plane. <laughs> so what? Right? Um, who says that I should have a float plane, right? Because I want the best transportation money can buy to go from here to, I don't know, whatever. Um, it was more relevant in, 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 I used to want to float plane a lot in Seattle, because there's lots of places to go. I want one a little bit less here. I just want a regular plane. <laughs> but the point is that, of course we all want the best healthcare money can buy, but that's not relevant, right? It's, it's not relevant because we all can't have the best healthcare money, money can buy unless we have less of other things, and presumably there's some balance point where how much we want something. I wouldn't mind a Ferrari too, although it would be kind of embarrassing, right? But if you gave me a Ferrari, I would sell it to buy other things that I want more with that money. So we did some multivariate regression work to control for a lot of these other characteristics of nurses. So it has to, see, I'm an economist. I have to have the geeky regression table. And so um, get your geek on. And what the user does is opens up these, these uh, boxes and adjusts the coverage levels for different intervention strategies and can also adjust those by specific population if, those, if they click here. So there's a, a lot of flexibility to adjust the strategy to allocate the resources differently and that produces a series of scenarios. Uh, I happen to have two up here but it can go on and it leads to predictions on HIV prevalence as well as a variety of other outcomes uh, like uh, AIDS deaths and so on. Implications, the potential of this kind of intervention to improve quality and to use these kinds of vignettes to track whether quality has been improved. Would these utilities be applicable, the ones we measure in the U.S., in the Bay Area, to the country? Maybe. We hope so. To the world? I don't know. Unknowns. But then we will measure qualities, and then on this side, we'll look at the novel strategies and do the same things and make this comparison with this single metric. And we'll also do the same thing with these higher risk and lower risk women vaccinated and immunocompromised women and make this comparison. And then we have all the outcomes that I explained to you.
we will then also do the economic analyses to help guide policymakers about if they were going to choose a strategy, which one might they choose for their particular setting. Very intrigued with Jim's slide showing how you can use a website to change these parameters to fit it to different settings, and um, we will take that as a suggestion. <laughs> in terms of the role of economics in search, it is central. Absolutely from the get-go that we put this consortium together, um, it was front and center. The one example that I'm going to take you through briefly today um, is a project that we did called the Integrated Prevention um, Campaign. In Kenya, in 2008, we partnered with the, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Public Health in Kenya to see if we could help them meet their very ambitious targets for HIV voluntary testing and counseling. Should we pay patients to take their medications? In the Cairo Declaration, there is actually, in the program of action, there is a segment where they say, to the extent possible, incentives and disincentives should not be used. Why? Because people are worried about coercion. Right? So even very small incentives, if someone is credit constrained, right, becomes more than just a negative price, the income effect starts to become really important. And so we point to what happened in the mid-1970s for a couple of years in India, there were incentives that were being used for sterilization. And that has had a really long arm of, uh, you know, even 1994, people were saying we shouldn't think about incentives anywhere. You see many papers, um, my name is on some of them, that say things like Interve intervention A was found to cost, you know, whatever, $300 per dolly averted, uh, per capita GDP in Ghana was $2,500. This is a highly cost-effective intervention, the implication being, from an economic point of view, that that intervention should be adopted. Uh, this is problematic for a couple of reasons. Um, maybe the most important one is it, uh, it kills inquiry. It kills inquiry into the question which is really at the heart of cost effectiveness analysis which is is the intervention under question really the best use of the resources given the other available options in other words anything below this threshold is cost effective which co totally ignores or lumps together interventions that might be wildly different in cost effectiveness but still meet the threshold 